our next segment for today. We'll be talking about Group 73 for historians. This is a group of patriotic youth who are proud of Egyptian history and they are trying as much as they can to keep records of all the important events in Egyptian history. Today we have the pleasure to have with us one of uh, the members of this group who is uh, Marwan Idzib. Hello, Hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Welcome to the show. Of course you must have really good uh, research skills and indeed interest in history in order to be a member or to delve into Yes, indeed. We do document all the uh, events uh, occurred during the Egyptian wars during the last 40 years, starting from the War of Attrition, the Six Days War and the 1973 war. Normally, we do meet with the soldiers and uh, officers who fought during these wars. We document or our recording their uh, heroic actions during these wars and uh, we take some photos they took during the operations they, uh, during the battles um, then we do uh, publish them over the website on the internet uh, after that we started to feel that people are not interested in reading therefore we went to documentaries so uh, our first documentary uh, was shown in another um, channel like a year ago which was uh, Wings of Fury of Nahl Ghadab now we are moving to some more uh, uh, projects, especially in documenting things. As long as we are talking about uh, Sinai and we are yes. celebrating the 25th of April, yes. so when it comes to the Sinai Liberation Day, yes. what do you have to tell us about the day and what did you record about it? Uh, liberation of Sinai started like 10 years before its uh, actual liberation. From the second day after the defeat in 1967, uh, Egypt, the Egyptian leadership started to work towards liberating Sinai from the Israeli occupation. Uh, we went through the war of attrition, we went through El Abur or what's known as uh, the 6th, uh, 6th October war, uh, the peace agreement in Camp David, then the uh, negotiations about liberation of Sinai which ended in 1979 and full liberation of Sinai in 1982 ended the liberation by the liberation of Taba in 1989 um, that's it, that's all what we do have about the liberation Sinai uh, we do know uh, some stories about the Bedouins who fought uh, against Israel with Egypt we do know some stories about the brave men and, and soldiers who fought during this since you're here we can abuse the fact that you have so much knowledge and you yes. know all of these stories would you like to give us an important story that, that was personal to you, that you really appreciate? This lady received a medal from uh, President Anwar Sadat, okay, uh, for, for her heroic action during uh, the War of Attrition also. Uh, she started to carry information about the Israeli movements, uh, the Israeli military movements among Sinai. Also, she, she supported some of the uh, secret service who went to Sinai to carry out information. Uh, they went to her house, she provided some food and shelter for them. Another story about a kid, he's also from Sinai. A kid? Yes, a kid, uh, like an, a, a, a 10 years old kid. He now works in the Secret Service, still now, till today. Oh, wow. uh, this kid was very smart, one of the Egyptian Secret Service who went inside Sinai. He saw him, he met him, okay. Uh, he, immediately he, he realized that this kid was very smart to be a normal Bedouin kid. Uh, he used to sell eggs, you know, eggs, fresh eggs for uh, the Israeli troops inside their uh, camps in Sinai. Okay. He was trained to carry out, to see around the camp about uh, the types of uh, weapons, the types of tanks, the types of uh, guns they do carry. And they trusted this yes, kid. Yes, they trusted this kid. They believe that this kid is a very poor Bedouin kid. Yeah. And, she didn't feel, and they didn't feel that he is uh, dangerous or something. This kid was very small. He kept recording everything, carrying this information to some ar to an army officer, who uh, eventually carried it into the leadership back in Egypt. Yes. After the liberation of Sinai, this kid, this kid received a medal and he became uh, an army officer, then a secret service officer. He nowadays Did works. Did you follow up with him? Did you interview? No, 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 of course not. That would be so interesting. Yes, it is. Um, Marwan, members of this group uh, just knew each other through the internet. No, 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 we normally we met each other. Um, yes, in the beginning, you only... No, in the beginning... Uh, Tell us, uh, yes, how did it start? It started by Ahmad Zaid and Abdullah Omram. They were friends. They were interested about the military history of Egypt. Okay. 
In 2008, they met General uh, Mohammed Okasha. He's an ex, uh, he's an ex uh, army officer. Okay. Uh, he's also a strategic uh, analyst. He works for some newspaper or something. They met him and they started to record his stories about the war. He's, uh, he's a pilot, he's a fighter pilot, exactly. Um, General Mohammed Akasha starting to uh, started to, uh, to set up some meetings with some army officers and some pilots who fought during the wars, uh, like General Samir Aziz, uh, General Nasr Musa. They are brave soldiers, they are brave pilots, actually. And they are known for her their heroic actions, especially for Israel. They know their names. Uh, also, we start to meet some Saqqa officers or special troops officers, like General Mohin Wah. He works with the group, uh, 30, he used to, work, uh, to fight with group 39, uh, known in Arabic, with uh, General Rafai, if you heard about General Rafai. Also, about we, uh, with General Mu'taz al Sharawi. Lots and lots of, uh, of heroes. We believe that during the first day of the war, 70,000 soldiers who crossed the canal. We do have 70,000 stories to be told, and we started to document these stories. This is really good that you were looking out for sources and uh, yes. so on, but you, you're a very academic group. Do you find more youth that are coming up to you and they're interested? Yes, yes, of course. We do have some meetings with these groups in public places like uh, Cairo Library, um, these heroes they come to, tell, to say their stories for the youth. You cannot imagine how many people they come and they do attend from many, many places in Egypt, different cities. Most of us, we are located in Cairo, but when we find out someone who came from Sohag or Romania just to meet someone, he just saw his name or he read his name in some book or he saw him over the, uh, the Facebook, that's incredible. Uh, people started to, to, to search for uh, an idol or uh, a role model after the Egyptian revolution. And they started to feel that these heroes are their, are their uh, role models. That's why they come to listen to their stories. It's, uh, it's something huge to see someone who gave everything for his country and he didn't receive anything and he didn't wait for anything. That's why we, we, do, we, we do appreciate it. Marawan, what are the materials that you use or depend upon on recording uh, the history? Just a camera, a normal, a normal camera. No, I uh, mean the resources that uh, we you do follow, depend from which uh, you follow. Uh, we do depend on ourselves. That's it. Uh, nowadays, from as where do you bring the information? I mean, with the way we, we yes. bring the information, we do call these years. First of all, uh, I met someone. Okay, I had a meeting with him. I do record his stories. I do ask him, do you know another one? Who, 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 do, who do you think? He's ready to say his story or his side from the stories. Sometimes he say yes, sometimes they say no. When we meet someone, we do present ourselves, uh, who we met before. We record all the, uh, the meeting with them. We do ask the questions in a certain manner to, to grab the information from them. You know, uh, those people, they don't want to say anything. They believe that they, do, they did what they did only for the sake of Egypt. Do they think it's dangerous for them to no, give no, no, information? No, no, uh, no. It's not the idea. They want. Uh, but they, they don't speak a lot. Yes, normally right? they don't speak a lot. Yes. We convince them to speak because, well, sometimes tell them people need for a role model. It's for the sake of the history of Egypt. It's for the sake of the new generation to know what you have done. They start to loosen up a little bit and they start to talk. People who belong in general to the military armed forces, they, they don't, don't speak. Yeah, yeah they don't true. speak a lot. They, they usually don't speak. very short and to the yes. point. And it's sometimes they feel that we are spies or something. <laughs> it is part of their culture. Are you yeah. sure? um, so after a while, people started to trust us, and we had um, a, a great reputation among the military uh, environment in Egypt, especially for the retired people who fought during the wars. They know our names. They know Group 73 historians. When we call someone at, uh, uh, at the phone, we say, we are, I am a member of Group 73 historians. He immediately replies, I know you. Do you want to record with me? I immediately I reply, yes, I would like to. That's really nice. Do you find that some of them actually seek you out? Do some of them call yes. you? Yes, some of them, yes, they do actually call us. In a certain way, their sons, they call us. Well, my father used to fight during the That's war. Beautiful. Would you like to record his side of story? Immediately we say, yes. Anyone deserves to say his story. You look to Israel, for example. Israel started to document even the, the 6th of October war. In fact, if you, if you went outside Egypt, 
you will find all of the people around the world, they believe that Egypt lost. In the best case scenario, it's a tie between Egypt and Israel, which didn't happen. This is the main purpose for us. This is the main goal for us to, t to tell the people, to tell the world, well, we didn't lose at all. We won the war. And how, how can we lose? And we got Sinai back. Okay? That's the, the main objective behind us. Uh, as I said before, uh, people, they, they, they don't tend anymore to read articles or written articles. That's why they want to watch. Uh, why, that's why we went to documentaries. Uh, in, in the future, near future, we are starting a new project, which is Wahush uh, al-Saqa, in a collaboration with the Egyptian uh, army, also uh, Katiba Rabamir Tamantashar, which is, in, we are shooting the film now, it's a documentary also, and that's it. I think it's very interesting when it comes to just recording uh, history and uh, the important events and I think it will make a lot of difference when, uh, when we read about, especially when, when it comes to the new generation. Yes, they don't, they don't like to read at all. They like to watch, only to watch and listen. That's why we had a, a huge feedback and a, a very a positive feedback about the first one, which is Wings of Fury or Nacht al-Ghadab, which was about the... Uh, uh, the, hero, uh, the heroes of the Air Force during the Six Days War, the 6th of October, and the War of Attrition. Uh, from this uh, feedback, we came with the idea why we don't we document a film about the air defense and about the soccer, the special troops. We do have lots of stories, we do have the material, we do have uh, the, the actual heroes who fought during this war. We can ask them, and they just started to help us uh, to uh, reconstruct the, the, the real events during these this, uh, operations. Right, uh, Marawan Adib, uh, one of the members of Group 73 Historians, thank you very much You're for welcome. joining. Thank yeah, you very much for being with us. And now moving on to a break, and we'll be back to review the Nile Cruise.